The kitchen is now abandoned farmhouse of John Wright, gloomy kitchen, and left without having been put in order. The walls covered with a faded wallpaper. Down right is a door leading to the parlor. On the right wall above this door is a built-in kitchen cupboard with shelves in the upper portion and drawers below. In the real wall at right, up two steps is a door opening into stairs leading to the outside. Between these two doors is an old-fashioned black iron stove. Running along the left wall from the shed door is an old iron sink and sink shelf, in which is set a hand pump. Downstage of the sink is an uncurtained window. Near the window is an old wooden rocker. Center stage is an unpainted wooden kitchen table with straight chairs on either side. There is a small chair down right. Unwashed pans under the sink, a loaf of bread outside the bread box, a dish towel on the table, other signs of incompleted work. At the rear of the shed, door opens and the sheriff comes in, followed by the county attorney and Hill. The sheriff and Hill are men in middle life. The county attorney is a young man. All are much bundled up and go at once to the stove. They are followed by the two women. The sheriff's wife, Mrs. Peters. First, she is a slight, wary woman, a thin, nervous face. Mrs. Hill is larger and would ordinarily be called more comfortable looking. But she is disturbed now and looks fearfully about as she enters. The women have come in slowly and stand close together near the door. This is good. Come up to the fire, Mrs. Peters. Ah, uh, no. Cool. Uh, now, Mr. Hill, before we move things about, can you explain to Mr. Henderson just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning? It's just a saying. When you dropped below zero last night, I thought I'd better send Frank out this morning to make a fire for us. He's getting to know me with a big case on, but I told him not to touch anything except the stove, but you know Frank. Well, somebody should have been left with this today. Oh, yesterday. But I had to send Frank out to more Spencer for that man went crazy. I wanted to know that I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you could get that from Omaha by today. And as long as I went over everything else. Oh, Mr. L. L. Yes. What happened when you came here yesterday morning? Harry and I had started to town with a lot of potatoes. We came along the road from my place and as I got here I said, I'm going to see if I can get John Wright to go in with me on a party telephone. I spoke to Wright about it once before and he put me off, saying folks talk too much anyway. And all he asked was peace and quiet. I guess you know about how much he talked himself. But I thought maybe if I went to the house and talked about it before his wife. Though I said to Harry that I didn't know what his wife wanted made much different to John. Let's talk about that later, Mr. L. I do not want to talk about that, but tell me now just what happened when you go to the house. Well, I didn't hear or see anything. I knocked at the door and still it was all quiet inside. I knew they must be up. It was just past 8 o'clock. So I knocked again and I thought I heard somebody say, Come in. I wasn't sure. I'm not sure yet. But I opened the door. That door. And they're in that rocker. What was she doing? Well, she was kind of rocking back and forth. She had her, her apron in her hand and she was kind of pleading it. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. How do you mean? Queer? Well, as if she didn't know what she was going to do next and kind of done up. Did she seem to show about the coming? Why, I don't think she minded. One way or another, she didn't pay much attention. I said, how do Mrs. Y? It's cold, isn't it? And she said, is it? And one went on kind of bleeding at her prod. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask me to come up to the stuff or sat down, but she just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said, I want to see John. And then she laughed. I guess you would call it a laugh. I thought of Harry and the team outside. So I said a little sharp, can I see John? No, she says, kind of dull like, and he home, says I. Yes, says she, he's home. Then, why can I see him? I asked her out of patience. Cause he's dead, says she. Dead, says I. She just nodded her head, not getting a bit excited, but rocking back and forth. Why, where is he, says I, not knowing what to say. 
She just put it upstairs like that. I got up with the idea of going up there. I walked from there to here. Then I says, why, what did he die of? He died of a rope around his neck, says she, and just went on pleading at her problem. While I went out and called Harry, I thought he might need help. We went upstairs and there he was lying. Well, I think I would rather have to go to the upstairs where you can bring all of and just go on now with the rest of your story. Well, my first thought was to get that rope off. It looked... Mm -hmm. But Harry, he went up to him and he said, No, he's dead, alright? And we'd better not touch anything. So we went back downstairs. She was still sitting that same way. Has anybody been notified? I asked. No, she says, unconcerned. Who, who did this, Mrs. Wright? Said Harry. He said it business-like. And she uh, stopped pleading of her apron. I don't know, she says. You don't know? Says Harry. No, says she. Weren't you sleeping in the bed with him? Says, says um, Harry. Yes, says she. But I was on the inside. Somebody slipped a rope around his neck and strangled him. And you didn't wake him? Says Harry. I didn't wake up. She said after him. We must, we must look as if we didn't see now. That could be. For after a minute, she said, I sleep around. Harry was going to ask her more questions, but I said, maybe we ought to let her tell her story first to the coroner or the sheriff. So Harry went fast as he could to Rivers Place, where there's a telephone. And what did Mrs. Wright do when she knew that you had gone to the coroner? She moved from that chair to that chair over there and just sat there with her hands held together and looking down. I got a feeling that I ought to make some conversation, so I said I had come to in see if John wanted to put in a telephone, and at that she started to laugh, and then she stopped and looked at me, scared. I don't know, maybe it wasn't scared. I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon Harry got back, and then Dr. Lloyd came, and you, Mrs. Peters, and so I guess that's all I know that you don't. Well, I guess we'll go upstairs first and then out to the bar around there. You can't see that there was nothing important here. Nothing will point to anyone. Well, nothing here, but kitchen things. She worried about that when it turned so cold. She said the fire cold out and her jaws would break. Can you, bad woman, help for murder and worrying about her preserve? Well, women are used to worrying over tree folks. And yet, what do we do with other ladies? Not much of a skipper, would you say?